In this video we are going to see how we can make some tileable textures from within Substance Painter. So first thing you will go to File, Open Sample and you are going to open the Tiling Material Sample and you will have something like this. So this basically is just a plane that is subdivided and let me show you the wireframe. It is something like this and basically each subdivision of the plane shares the same UV space. So when you come here and you start painting your stuff, it is of course going to wrap around the painting because that shows so how Sustain Painter works and you will end up with this texture right here that is tileable. So basically you can do the same thing on Blender by taking a plane, so dividing it and making it so all these uh, faces share the same UV coordinates. So we are going to make the bricks that you saw on the beginning. First we are going to disable the wireframe and I'm also going to disable the displacement because I don't need it. Just going to add some color corrections here so it looks a little bit better. We are going to keep this as a base and now I am just going to make a mask that I am going to use as an anchor point. So I kind of expect you to know more or less how to uh, work with Substance Painter but the main point of this video is to show you this worker. Cool. So we are going to search here for some bricks. And we have this right here. First thing, I'm going to invert the mask. And now we can simply work with our mask. This is kind of like the same you will have on Substance Designer. The only difference is that in Substance Designer, of course, you will have a lot more of potential uh, to do stuff. If you want to do really uh, powerful materials, go to Substance Designer. This is mostly a easy way to make some procedural uh, tileable materials. Alright, so we have here the mask. We are going to create an anchor point, which I'm going to call Big Mask. And I'm going to work a little bit more on this mask. Maybe we're going to bring a slope. And just going to play around with some stuff. Maybe with this, we are going to use min. Don't really like this one. Maybe this. Wait, is that the same thing? Okay, let's try this one. And just play around with it until you get something that you like. Going to add another slope there. And there we have something like that. Which is going to work for now, I guess. Um, let's maybe try a fill. Let's see what we can get with some branch. Let's just add it and decrease it a bit. Maybe invert it. No, that's okay. So we have this mask. And now we are going to start with the bricks. So I'm going to make a folder, a fill, and I'm going to take the data from the anchor point. So first thing, we are going to make the base of our bricks. So let's take a color like that, for example. Let's add some uh, height to this. Let's see the roughness. 
let's start by adding some color variations so generally i like to come here and use in the base color a pearly noise and let's see if i can find uh yeah it can work doesn't matter just a pearly noise like this and then i go ahead to filter just for the color and I use gradient and I just pick some random colors something like so and now I, I switch this I can call this variation T mode to color and I decrease the saturation to something really really low. Let's try with six for now. And maybe this can even go for the whole uh, material. So we are going to make some color variations for the brick. Color one. Uh, let's maybe try a more orange stone let's add some mask and play with that looks like so we don't need any of these just the color actually i'm just going to turn on the color view let's see let's now add a really saturated color first with some spots something like that let's multiply this by something else to add a little bit of variation and that is coming along fine let's now add something like a plaster color pick a little bit of unsaturated color and let's just use a completely different map and maybe this and we are going to decrease the balance a lot And you know, just play around with it until you get something you're happy with. Now I'm just going to add some spots, as in some holes. And uh, what's going on? Let you feel spots. And I don't think this will work. This might. I don't think so either. Maybe some Gaussian. Uh, let's just decrease the contrast a lot. And for this, I'm going to take the height and just make some spot there with a dark color. And probably very rough like so i really hate this this right here i don't like it at all it's actually inverted probably um yep we can now if we want add here like a filter if we want to control the overall color of our bricks maybe some more saturation change the hue of it and stuff like that i think that's fine for now and now we are just missing the plaster uh, material so we can go ahead uh, we don't really need the mask here but we will add it anyways as a fill the anchor point 
and we are going to of course invert the mask that's the cluster and we can use if we want uh, a predefined material from here and this is basically what we have as you can see this is something that you can tile you can just export this and you will have this texture to use any way you want so that's basically it that's how you can make a television material in substance painter now if you are interested in making hot painted and uh, tile level materials i suggest that you don't use substance painter but you use something like Rita instead which is a full blown out um, painting program that has some really nice brushes to blend colors together and actually i have a course that you can buy you will have the links in the description where i teach how to make hand painted textures with Krita. and yeah that's basically it if you found this video useful please leave a like subscribe to see more content like this and share the video if you think some other people might find it useful thank you and i will see you in the next video